All right, welcome back. This time we're going to be looking at the next tool, which is the HDR scape tool. Okay, HDR stands for high dynamic range. Before I open up this tool, you know, since this is also not just about photo editing, you should also know the principles of photography. First, I want to just quickly explain you what HDR is and how do we actually achieve HDR photography in the field when we are actually shooting, because that is actually the correct way uh, to do it. So let me first of all, before I open the HDR scape panel, let me go back to the tuning image panel, the first one that we saw, okay? So let's say we've got this landscape image, okay, that we've shot. Now usually what happens is, especially in high contrast scenarios, now this is a high contrast scenario. What do I mean by that? If you look at the sky, it's very bright, but if you look at the foreground, it's in shadows, it's dark, okay? Usually this happens when the sky is very bright. Okay, you're going to encounter the situation that anything in front will become dark. This is where we've already kind of seen this in the first few videos. We increase the shadows, decrease the highlights to kind of get an HDR effect. We're trying to balance out the exposure. But on the field, the correct way to do HDR photography is that we actually take multiple shots of different exposures. For example, let's say this shot that we took is of a middle exposure where the light meter that we see in the camera was in the center. Then what we do is, we take another shot which is deliberately overexposed. So let me just manufacture that here by opening these settings. And let's say if I increase the brightness, okay. So brightness already selected. And let's say I take a shot, something like this. Okay, my next shot is something like this, which I'm deliberately overexposing. So one of the shots now that I have is where, yes, the sky gets completely overblown, overexposed, but my foreground is of a good exposure. Similarly, I take a third shot in which I actually do the opposite now. I actually take a shot in which the exposure is very less and this is usually on field achieved by changing your shutter speed. If you're interested in learning HDR, how to do this, check out my photography for beginners course where I tell you all the technical details on how to do it. And I also have got another course called Lightroom for Beginners where I go into uh, literally show you the best way to generate an HDR image. Though Snapseed will also be able to ultimately do it uh, with this image that we have, okay? Anyway, now you can see we've got this shot where the sky has good details, but we lose the details on the foreground. So basically we end up with three shots. This shot, the one in the middle, and one overexposed shot like this. Now we can combine all these three like in a software like Lightroom, like I show you in my courses, uh, and you can achieve that. That is what Snapseed is trying to do here, but just with a single image in the HDR scape tool. So if I just press cross, okay, we just have one image here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up tools, we're gonna go to HDR scape, and boom, you really don't even have to do anything. The moment you press the panel button, it automatically applies the first filter that you see, the setting here, which calls, which is called nature. I'm going to talk about the other settings also, but to be frank, there's not much to talk about them, okay? So for, first, let me just show you what, ha what happened here. Similar to what I was showing you, Snapseed has now done something similar, but just with that one photo. It has raised the shadows in the foreground and decreased the highlights in the sky to give us this HDR effect. And this, uh, they add some other things to it, like sharpening and other things. This whole process is called as tone mapping, okay? And the strength of tone mapping Tone mapping can be controlled by you by changing this filter strength. So if I take it to zero, this is what we started off with. But if we start adding that tone mapping effect or the HDR effect, we can increase the strength all the way to 100, which usually is something to be avoided. Because overprocessed HDR images look very bad, like you can see, because they start getting those halo-like things around the object. For example, here, if you see, just see the boundaries of the clouds here. They get this blackish look. This is called as the halo effect, okay? Uh, sometimes, uh, you know, you can call them as artifacts or anything, over sharpening, halo. But basically the point is it's going to look very unnatural. So definitely, you'll never ever be using a filter strength of 100. By default, it was set at, I think, 50, which was fine in this case, but let's at least go through the other settings also. So. This was nature. Now the second setting it says is nature with people. I have absolutely no clue what this means. I know about HDR enough to know that yes, if there are people involved in a landscape shot, you, you know, 
If you're using one of those HDR softwares, it reduces the effect of HDR and it deals with it differently because what happens is if you're taking those multiple shots like I've shown you before, but if there are people, there is bound to be movement in the shots, right? Or even if there's an object which is moving, like for example, if we had longer grasses which were moving by wind, then in that case you used, you, you can use this setting like with people or with something that is moving, but that is more relevant when you have taken those three different shots. Here, what I don't understand is why Snapseed gives us this option when we're actually dealing with just one photo. We are not using multiple photos, therefore, there's no problem of the movement because just one photo. So I do not understand why Snapseed gives this option of people, okay? But what it does basically is, you can see, if I click, to, if I click on nature, which is by default, it just slightly reduces the effect when I click on the people. Kind of makes sense because it's expecting if there are people, if there's movement, let's reduce the effect so that that movement, uh, you know, the variation in the movement is not too much, okay? If you're not understanding this, don't worry. To be frank, it's, I don't think it's of any use. So you can, even if you didn't understand what I just said about the people and all things, don't worry. You've not missed anything because I don't think this option is relevant at all, okay? Then let's go on to the fine setting. Again, I don't understand what this does. What is the difference? I've tried to research about it a lot also. On Snapseed website, they don't say anything about it. I go to strong. This obviously means the effect is more stronger. But usually, for me also, and I've seen a lot of people, other, other people, when they use this tool, you basically just use the first option. It's just nature. Okay, by default, Snapseed gives you. And we don't really even change the filter strength too much. By default, it's set to 50. We can change a bit. If, for example, here, if I just want that halo to completely go away, still have a bit of the HDR effect, then I can just reduce the filter strength too much because these days, earlier on HDR photos used to be very popular. These days, they kind of get a bad name because people think they are over-processed. And trust me, that's not a, it is kind of a fair judgment because they can look over-processed. So this looks, I think, fine, not too over-processed because if I compare it with the original, you can see there is a fair amount of difference, right? We've got, definitely we've got more details in the foreground now. The grass in the foreground is really nice and contrasty and the sky looks much darker and nice without those bad looking halos, okay? But even within this filter, you can change some settings. For example, if I open up the settings option now, once I've selected this filter, there is that setting options down. If I click on that, we can change the filter strength from here also, but we can also play with other tools, which are brightness and saturation. So I can, if I want, even increase the brightness here a bit and if I want the shot to be slightly more colorful add more vibrance to it like this okay I'm just gonna increase the filter strength slightly I to be very frank I like a bit of loud effects I'm just being honest with you because you know uh, hey listen it's sometimes also about having fun now let's just look at the before and after definitely there's a huge difference but it's not something we could not have achieved just using the tuning image panel. So you can use this, but if you wanna have more control over things, you can just play around with highlights and shadows and contrast in the tuning image panel, and it'll do the same job for you. So I hope that you like this. I'll see you in the next panel. Bye for now.